and welcome back to the Scale Modelling Cafe and welcome to another, well, I was going to say sprue tour, it's not really a sprue tour because there are no sprues involved, it's an aftermarket review and it's Red Fox. Red Fox Studios produce 3D printed instrument panels and consoles and all that sort of detail. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I guess the technology really started with Quinter Studio and their decals and lots of companies have copied that idea. Edward do them and uh, I know Kitsworld in the UK do them. But they're decals. So to remove the detail uh, and the resin from the backing you need to soak them in water uh, which means they can go damp, they can sort of curl. They go down really nice and they look fantastic when done but they have their limitations. Red Foxes are slightly different. They are printed on acrylic resin. So they're quite brittle and they just peel off from the backing, as you'll see in a sec. Really easy to use. They look fantastic. In fact, I think they look better than the 3D printed decals. That might be something to do with the medium that they're printed on. Uh, it might be something to do with their particular printer, which is higher definition, I don't know, but they, I think they are, they are better and certainly easier to use. One thing that is, I was going to say negative, it's not really a negative, it's a difference. And that is with most of these things, they, on the consoles and instrument panels, the coloured bit of the console, um, whatever it is, is printed with the instruments. Which means you're gonna to have to match the color to the product, which can be a little bit tricky to get it absolutely nailed on. The decal is uh, relatively easy because all you can do is with a sharp scalpel blade and a straight edge is you can just trim them very nicely. And that's exactly what I did on the 72nd scale Academy Air 14, which you can uh, go and have a look at, it's on the channel, that particular project. These are very brittle. Like I say, it's printed on acrylic resin. Now, in the Antonov Colt video, the cockpit video, you'll see that I take the B1B set and I chop it up with a saw. It worked, but I did lose some bits uh, where I... Uh, I accidentally cracked it and snapped it. It's very brittle. But that's because I was mucking about with it. In the, um, in the packet, they're absolutely fine. And if you're just gonna peel them off the backing and stick them on, they'll be absolutely fine. If you were to try and trim them, you, which you can do, just be very, very careful because they are susceptible to a little bit of damage if you're not careful. I'm going to be using the F14 set, which you'll see in a moment, on a, uh, on a Tamiya kit that I've got planned coming up later in the year. And what I'll probably do is just mask off just in certain areas. When I paint the cockpit, I'll paint those as well. The bits around the instruments, I'm going to leave because that's just way too fiddly and uh, they are under shrouds and combings. And I'll be able to match it up close enough, I think. But certainly on the side consoles where there's exposed bits, I'll be repainting those. Anyway, I guess you all want to see the product if you haven't seen it already. So let's pop over to the bench and I'll show you the few sets that I've got and I'll get them out of the packet and you can see them in close up. Sorry about the reflection and shine. <laughs> I've tried my best to uh, minimize it. But these are the four sets. The uh, 109 G6AS for the Edward kit, the F14D set for the Tamiya kit, uh, both these two come to the channel, and the uh, F35 set, both in 48. This is, uh, they're both for the Kitty Hawk kit actually, and you can see they've got the uh, power on. So what I'll do, let's, um, let's get one out, move those to one side. So let's get the, 10, uh, the 109 set out. It would have been nice if this was all one Ziploc bag actually, but there we go. But we'll get it out. So what you get is, let's just 
turn that off. Uh, you get the set itself and then these instructions here, which are actually um, quite simple. Let's just move that over there. So you get a parts diagram. And here's the assembly instructions. So it says here that the blue parts are not smooth. Please remove them. So essentially, sand it flat. I'm not sure if you get a completely blank one with Edward, actually. I'm hoping you do. If not, I hope they're watching this and you get the um, flat option. I don't have to do anything with the oxygen regulator, um, but these things obviously have to be sanded flat. That's all nice and clear. And then it's very straightforward. The placement diagram, that goes on that, that goes on that, that goes on there, and these bits go on here. Dead easy, nice and simple. So very clear instructions, but it is a it is a simple set. And here we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snap my fingers and we'll be in zoom in mode. Okay, here we are in zoom in mode, and this is the set. As you see, it's quite small, but look at that detail. Let's see if I can bring it in a little bit closer. That is absolutely amazing. Now, this is not a decal. This is resin, so it's quite brittle. It's this sort of acrylic stuff. The advantage of this is you don't have to soak it to get it off the backing paper. You literally just sort of bend the, um, I'll be very careful, like that. You just bend the, peel the paper back, and then with tweezers, you literally just lift it off. I won't do that here. So no soaking required. I have found with those that they go a little bit damp, um, the water-based ones, and can curl up. These, oops, sorry about that. Um, ought to be watching the screen. Uh, these don't do that. Uh, and you just apply a bit of glue. Oh, there you go, it's moving. Um, and just take it off. Um, you literally just stick that onto the panel. I'll put that back. Um, there we go. So that, oh, sorry. That is the 109G6 AS set. Onto the F14. So here's the F-14 set, obviously a lot more involved than the single-engine World War II fighter. Again, very clear what bits you have to sand flat. And there's the parts placement diagram. Very, very clear and should be very, very quick. Here's the set. Get out of its bag. I'll be very careful because I'm not going to be building this for a little while months and let's do a bit of zoomage okay as you can see here on these they have molded some of the gray to be honest I wish they wouldn't do that I wish they just leave that off what I'll probably do on these panels here at least is I will mask that and I will spray that when I spray the cockpit. It's only a tiny bit. The advantage of the decal version of these uh, from other companies is you can just slice that away with a sharp scalpel blade. Um, you can't do that with this because this is, as I said earlier, this is acrylic resin and it's quite brittle. So you could, you could I suppose, saw it away um, but I'd be very, very careful doing that. I'm probably, as I said, just gonna mask it and spray it. Can't really do that with these, but it's quite a small area and these are under a combing. But you can see how beautiful that is. Here's all the circuit breakers down here. Again, this has got power on, got some green writing on here. Um, and on the, uh, on the pilots one as well. To be honest, I wish they'd just do that black, because that is power on. But uh, a small gripe, and if I just get it in the light, you can see the glossiness of the dials. Absolutely stunning, that. So that's the F-14.
Right, this is the F35, and uh, I hope you can get this. I'm not going to open these because these actually aren't mine. They belong to a friend of mine. Um, but the same deal, but um, I'm just hoping you can see the, in this one you've got the powered on version and actually the powered off version, which I think is brilliant. That's a great option. So with the F35 sets, you can choose power on or power off. That's brilliant. Love that. But the same exceptional detail really is lovely. Right, let's go back to the chair and have a chat. There we go. That was the Red Fox Studios set for the 109G6 48 scale for the Edward kit, the F14A for the Tamiya kit in 48th, and again in 48th for the F35 B and C. Um, I think for the kinetic kit, is that right? Or Kitty Hawk? I can't remember now. Blimey, I'm going to have to go and check. <laughs> anyway, I think you'll agree that they look absolutely brilliant. Now, some people are going to say it's cheating. They said that with Photo Etch. They said that with Colour Photo Etch. And they're saying it now with these Red Fox um, update sets and the Decal equivalent. I fundamentally disagree. I think they are a bit of a game changer. There's no difference to using a decal, um, laying it down over the raised detail, in my opinion, but you're gonna get far, far superior results with these, and I just think they are stunning. In my opinion, in my view, the focal point of any aeroplane model is the cockpit, and these just scream realism to me i think they are um brilliant as i said so um i'm really looking forward to using these um i've got the like i say the 109 g6 as that's going to be coming soon to the channel and also the f14 is going to be coming later on in the year and uh, i really can't wait to get to grips with them there we go that is the red fox studio system for instrument decals i call them decal they're not really a decal but you know what I mean, instrument panels and consoles. There we are. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I'll be doing more of these as we go forward. So thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye.